everyone. Welcome back to Motion RC live on this Tuesday. And uh, thank you so much for joining us uh, here again. It's rainy for me in Georgia, and we're going to try to go live every day this week up until our main usual Friday live show, uh, which hopefully we still don't know what we're going to do yet on that main show. But uh, today, as you can see, we got a fresh F7, F3 Tiger Cat, one of my favorite birds, actually. This was the second plane I purchased for myself. You know, get employee discount or whatnot, but I purchased for myself uh, a long while back uh, when I got into, you know, when I got here with Motion, uh, just because I loved it. I love the look of it, and it flies like a big trainer, but it can also, you know, perform pretty well, but I just love its presence in the air. So, uh, you guys hearing me okay? Want to make sure that's all good, because again, I'm producing this one myself, as Alex is working from home, but he'll probably join us in the chat. I'm sure Alpha will jump in as well, but this should be a little while longer than yesterday. Yesterday we did the uh, BAE Hawk and uh, a much quicker assembly than this one. I know this is a two-part fuselage, so we're going to have to take some time to uh, let the fuselage dry up and everything. I don't know if I'll get to all the decals, but my goal is at least by the end of this video to have her set up, and I'm going to throw in a Stability Plus gyro uh, this time, so we can work on that a little bit. I already have the series out there, but again, this is just a freshener up, and if you've never used a Stability Plus gyro, uh, they work really, really well. Uh, they're perfect for you know, a plane like this, not that you need a gyro to fly a Tiger Cat, but it's a bigger wingspan and, you know, when the wind's hitting it, it's going to get knocked around. The gyro just, if you just set it up just right, it's just going to make it look great no matter uh, the type of weather you fly it in. So, I say, is Spinny there? There he is. Spinny's here. Thank you for joining, brother. And uh, I say we get to it. So, today I've got... I'll go with my top-down shot as we take this over. And I also got the side cam working so we can get even more close-ups. But, so there we go, top-down. Let me swipe the, uh, cut the tape, and let's get right into it today. So again, this plane, I forget the year it came out. It definitely is older than my time. And I, I was in 2017. So I would say, probably say early 2017 or maybe 2016. But um, it works pretty well. Top-down shot is pretty bad. Top-down shot, I mean, there it is. It looks pretty good to me. Am I upside down? Oh, should I? No, we're good. We're the right way up. Here we go. Just want you to see what's in the box, that's all. How she comes out. And I always love the way any foam model gets put in the box because everything just always is laid out so nicely so uh again you're getting all your decals you get two different sets i believe so i think for this one since i did the i did the hero set which is a set uh that you see on the on all the uh media and everything on the box art so i'll probably do the alternate set for uh for this one you get your manual so we'll follow that pretty much by the book today and again, get rid of that. And then you see top, it looks like we're getting our tail section with the vertical stab, one part of the fuselage, both wings, and a lot of miscellaneous bits. So let's start pulling that stuff out. We got our prop assemblies. We got our props, three-bladed props. We've got our control horns and screws and yeah, all your hardware there. What else do we got? Ribbon cables. You have some backing. Uh, this is what you put on the wings to hide some of your cabling when you're done. Like sort of peripheral at the end. You got some antennas, pitot tubes, guns I believe are on their cannons. And you got your glue. And they give you two of the, uh, the non-slip stuff for your battery. And then we'll cut out our spars because each wing on this model gets two spars. So on this model or yeah bigger one and a shorter one front and back put that off to the side now let's get out all our stuff i'll see if i can do this one in two hours but if we go over we go over because it's just that kind of week we're here to spend some time so let's get the first wing out here we go yeah I hear you, Alex. I'll work on it in a sec. Here, I'm gonna switch back to the main shot. 
There we go. As we take the wing out. And here we go. So you can see they already got servos. Already got servos installed on the wing section. I always love a navy blue plane, something about it. But obviously, guys, watch this one in the sun. As you could imagine, when you uh, you know, you put that navy in the sun, and it doesn't take long before uh, before that goes up. But you do have where well, your big nacelles are going to go. I can't wait to get to that section. That's probably underneath. I remember the first time I put one of these together, and the big you know nacelles are just big and heavy, and they really are like the majority of the weight on this bird is all there. But we got our first wing. Let's grab our second wing. Get rid of the foam. You get a ton of foam. Oh, I want to take that out first. It's telling me to do this one first. So it's doing tail first. So again, the tail section, because it's a two-part fuselage. Now this, I've heard horror stories you could mess up. And I remember one of the first planes I did, uh, this one of the first ones I did just on my own, all of your wires, because your servos are installed, are buried in there. If you glue this in without pulling your wires through, you're going to have a rough time separating it and, uh, you know, and getting that done. So you always want to make sure you pull those wires out before you get to that point. So now that I said that, I'll probably forget later. So I'll make sure to look over when we get to start building before I do that. But you definitely want to be careful with any two-part fuselage. Always look in both sides. Uh, yeah, rack them. It, it's terrible when they gator, but you know you can't see the gatoring when they're flying, and that's what I care about the most. But there's really nothing you can do. You land, and then somebody starts talking to you, and five minutes goes by flat, and you're just out there in the sun, and uh, that's it. That'll do it, especially the cockpits. But all right, putting that to the side, the other wing. We need to use some space here. Before we lay everything out, I think I got everything out of the top box. So let's go underneath. We'll cut out each side. Oh, it's been a while. I've been dying to get this one together again. Haven't had the time to do it. So we don't need that anymore. Goodbye. All right, so the bottom section, I'll go up to the top camera again quick, just so you can see. And there is everything right from the top down so we got our horizontal stabilizer it is two parts as you can see here and it's one of those where you know you put them in from each side and it has a spar there i believe yeah i believe i could separate them yep and then little plastic bits will connect the control surfaces because then one servo drives the entire the entire tail you probably just easily pry them apart there you go and one side already might have that glued in. Yep, that's glued in on one side. But I'll probably throw a little glue in there when we get to it. And then this is where all the action happens in the nacelle. Because you've got the landing gear already pre-installed in here. The ESC's in here. The motor's in here. In both of them. So all your weight and just the mean. And I, I actually seen some people were saying that they want to do... Um, I remember Justin Law was saying he wants to drill out the uh, the middle and put EDFs in there and make an EDF Tiger Cat. I think that would be pretty darn cool if you could, but I don't know what you do about the gear. Or you'd have to have the air coming out somewhere else. That would be a lot of work, but it would be kind of cool, I guess. But yeah, it looks nice. You got the dummy motor. I always like that in the front. And now with the airbrush and the detailing you could do to it, you could make it even crazier looking so let's get the last the last one out and i just like to get everything out laid out first and then we'll open up the manual and try to get her assembled in record time i'm looking down all my pockets am i missing anything you guys can see the top down doesn't look like i'm missing anything so last bit is the front of the fuselage and then i'm gonna lay this one on the floor next to me because when I glue the fuselage down, I want to let gravity do the work. So I'll fade back to the main camera. I'll let gravity do the work. And, you know, probably take about 15 minutes for the foam tack to go. But you got your pilot in there, nose gear already 
uh, installed as you would expect. And there she is. So laying things out on the table as we go. What's the first two? The first two parts we're gonna probably do, if I remember correctly, the manual is right here. So, I'm lucky to have a huge desk. Yeah, man, just an eight foot piece of plywood. And when I built it down here, I just went to Home Depot and I just cut, I cut a foot off an eight by four board. So I made it eight by three is what in front of me. So if it gives you any idea of uh, how you're going of uh, how big anything is, you know, scale. I could put a banana for scale, but she's a big bird. 1600 millimeter wingspan on this one. If you ever seen her at the field, you know, definitely a nice size, nice and presentable. So I just want to check what is our first order of business. So they actually want you to start working on, wow, that's weird. First thing it says in the book is to install the propeller. I'm not even gonna install the propeller probably today because as I'm setting things up, why bother? Um, I could show you how to do that later, but it's pretty simple. And then it says install the engine pod, but I don't wanna do that yet. The first thing I wanna do, I wanna get the fuselage glued together so that can be drying while I start working on the wings. So then when that's ready, we can just go. So as I said, first things first, with this model, we want to get inside here and find that, get that rat's nest out of there because we're going to use a go get em wire and we're going to pull this all this wire through first because if you glue this in, I've seen people do this at the, somebody at the club actually had said they did it. I almost did it. Like I had, I had the glue on and was going like this, you know, attaching them and then you know, almost mess myself up. So that would not be fun. So here we go, two wires coming out. And again, one's gonna be for your elevator and one is for your rudder, already attached. So make sure you do this key step first. Now the next thing you wanna do, um, guys, whenever you're gluing foam to foam, you wanna score the foam. It's gonna give you much more contact because you can see, especially with a two-piece fuselage, like they have mass to paint it, but they end up painting this side. So you're, you'd end up getting glue to paint um, and you don't want that. You want foam to foam and then the glue in the foam. So what I do is just take an X-Acto knife, razor blade, whatever you got, and just score it all up. So everywhere that foam is gonna contact foam because then it's gonna create more surface area and really give the glue more opportunity to uh, for adhesion. So I score it up there and since this has this side has like a square a square nub popping out from it, I'm gonna score the inside too. And then I'm gonna do the other side as well before we even worry about the glue. And then I'll be pretty liberal with my glue usage. And then I'm gonna put glue all over the spar as well. Really like, you know, make sure, cause you're never, obviously never taking the fuselage apart. Once you do this, this is, you set it, you do it once and you're never gonna do it again. Well, hopefully you never do it again unless you're doing a new one. So let's score this side. So again, I'm just making lines in all different directions. Straight, left, right. Always good to do. And get some up here. Perfect. Yeah, this was a tougher challenge to do live today. But I'm glad you guys are joining me again. Hope your families are happy, healthy. Hope your friends are safe. I'm starting to find out from friends. You know, I've been asking, I'm still in touch with high school friends and college friends and such. And over the weeks, we've been asking, do you know anybody yet? Do you know anybody yet? Now it's starting, people are starting to know people, you know, by six degrees of separation here. Um, so. Be careful there. All right. So I'm hoping it hasn't affected anybody that you know personally. All right, we need a go get them wire because I didn't see one in the box, surprisingly enough. But we've got a bunch on the wall over here, probably the same one that I use. I hang them all up. Now we want one of these guys, but you might not even need it actually because it is a pretty large hole here that we're in, but might as well. So we'll put it through the fuse, get it out the main part. So you see there's like a hole on the top. And we're coming out. 
And I'm just gonna connect them both here. This one I guess I'd opened up at some point, so let me just close that up a little more. There we go. Hopefully that doesn't fall out as I bring it back through. So I'm gonna bring it back. I'm gonna get pretty close and I'm gonna leave that there because now it's time to get our glue applied. Now you only need to apply the glue to one side. So the way I'm gonna do this, I have my glue here. I already have an open one, didn't open the one that came with the box, it's all the same. So I'm gonna get the glue. And you got, you got a lot of time, you know, you got a good amount of time with this glue. It's not like CA or anything where once you touch it, I wouldn't wanna use CA on, on this. But I'm gonna get it all over because the point of this glue, well, the way it works well too, once you connect it, then you wanna separate it, let some air in, and then close it up at that point and then obviously quickly wipe away any excess that's on the outside you'll always get some of that i just get it on the spar there we go that's a lot of glue that is a lot of glue so find it get it in there come on now there we go right where it meets let me pull the wire through Get that as taut as we can. All right, so now I'm gonna press it. I'm gonna hold it there for a second and I glued the side to my, the top to here. And now I'm gonna pull it apart just a little bit. There we go. Now you can see it strings up. I don't know if you could see in there. But it gets stringy and we're gonna wait. So I'll look at the comments. It's 1217 on my clock. So when that hits 1218 and a little bit, I'm gonna close it back up. And then that'll be done. And I'll put it off to the side, nose down, and just like gravity, uh, do the work. And then hopefully by the time we get back to kneading the fuselage, once we finish with the wings, then uh, the plane will be pretty much glued up and good to go. Oh, Spindy's talking about, yeah, guys, these are, these were planes, you know, I had a Tiger Cat uh, at the end of show season last year. It was beat up, like I said, so I sold it uh, at the end of our last show, and uh, I need a new one just to have it at the table, you know, have it to be able to demo with it, you know, every once in a while. I look through the planes that we have here, and those are the ones that we take to events, those are the ones we film, and you want them to look as nice as possible. They're all not perfect, but, you know, you do your best. You want to keep them, you know, you're trying to present them in the best light possible. You don't want to see too many models that are beat up. All right, so now that is glued in. We are good to go. I got my two wires, more than enough space because they're going to plug into, it has a, uh, a control board in the top of the wing, which I could show you in there. So right over here. Sorry, looking at the camera. So that's where they'll plug in. But now let's let that glue dry. So I put the foam box right on the floor here. And I'm gonna lean it. And you know what'll work even better? I have my two batteries. Let's balance her. There we go. Give her some more weight. So nose is into the foam. I can't see on the other side. Let's do it. Little tips. All right. I shouldn't touch that. And now she should just be drying. So now the first step was installing the engine pod. The engine pod. I like the cell. That's what I would say. But if they're calling it the engine pod, I'll call it the engine pod, I guess. So which is which, and it should tell you on here. Where they make it pretty easy, I would think. It's only gonna fit one way. I'm looking for where it's gonna say right and left. Probably has it somewhere on here. So which way is which? I'm looking on the foam. I'll find it, because there are definitely two options. Maybe the wing will give me the option because I see the way the foam is cut out 
because that's asking you to to do it one way. So let's see. Oh, there's a four on there. So then does this have a three? And it's fun being live, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so this wing has a four molded into it. This wing has a three. Ah, okay. Now I see it. The way the, the molding on the foam, if we don't get the other way, the way it's molded pretty much tells you the way it should go. So hard to really explain live, but if you can see this, the way the plastic mount at the top, it's like angled. So it's only gonna fit one way. So that's how you're gonna know if you got it the right way. But you're basically gonna be going in like this. Sweet, and yes, and also the back. This is the easiest spot to notice. The way the, the shape of the wing is gonna fit the nacelle perfectly. The other way it wouldn't work because it would, it would be crisscrossing. So that's how we did it, but I feel like on here there should be a three maybe molded in and I'm just missing it. It's been a while since I did it, but we're there. So we know this wing is this wing. This engine pod is for this wing and this one's for this. So we're gonna need some hardware before we get to this. And what I'm gonna do, because this doesn't look like a job for a tray, this looks like a job for some foam. I don't like pushing down on a wood table. So I'll just bring a little piece of foam that came out of a different box. And that's what we're gonna use in lieu, you know, to work just so we're not denting and dinging everything. As we go, I got my screw tray, my magnetic screw tray, and let's do it. So what screws are they asking for? Asking for three by 12s. So usually you can pretty much tell. So all the screws are in one package here. So they're giving us three sets of screws. So the big fat ones at the bottom are your main wing screws, two for each wing, that's gonna pull apart. Then the three by 12s, they give you eight of those are in the middle. And then the flush ones are usually always for a vertical, but in this case, they're probably for the horizontal stab. So, but it is definitely, these are the three by eight. So get those in our bucket, leave the other ones in the case. And first things first, now do I have to route any wires out of here? I'm sure I do. They tuck everything in. Now this is where, you know, you can really see, you know, like newer models, they do have ribbon cables eventually, but this is where a little work has to be done, you know, when you're putting together, especially most twin engines, like the P38s like that, where, <clears throat> You know, obviously it would be impossible to probably box this model up with this all attached already. But we've got, coming out, we've got landing gear, throttle lead, and your XT60 uh, for your motor. So we're gonna have to route that all through, and then that all goes in to the fuselage. So we wanna make sure we get that going, and we could attach our ribbon cable there. And then they give you the plate to, uh, to do it. So they put a little piece of foam here inside. So I'm gonna mount this. There's a little plastic bit that you can push everything sort of underneath. So I'll put this on the side and we can get everything routed. And this is, you know, the beauty of doing the fuselage first because that's gonna be all dried up and ready to go by the time we get back to that. Because again, this is, Nothing about this model is hard. Nothing about this is hard. It's just tedious more than anything else. And I wish I could be always looking over at the comment section. So hopefully Alex is keeping you guys entertained. Evan Owlette, you feel our customer service could be better. I mean, it depends on the situation. You know, we try our best to help everybody. You know, we do our very best, but this hobby is a lot of, uh, you know, it's tough. It's, it's, it's tough sometimes to you know, give everybody the answer they want to hear. We take a lot of people's word for it, but you know, a lot of accidents happen RC. It's just the nature of the beast and trying to, you know, do our best to make sure 
people are being uh, upfront and honest, you know, about how maybe an accident occurred or stuff, but we have a great group of CS guys that do their very best to help everybody out. So now I've routed that through. Let me make sure. Bada bang, and that fits flush. So now, sweet. I've got landing gear coming through. I've got my battery lead. The battery lead's the only thing that's going out. Your throttle and your landing gear, which come out of the engine pod, what they're calling it, uh, will go into this board here and then the ribbon cable out. So all the work is being done, you know, for the majority of the wiring here, which is okay. But I want to get these screwed down first. So where's my... And then whenever I would take this, you know, to the field, when I had the other one, pull this right off and these two wings upside down on each other. And I usually put a piece of foam in between and the wings so the pods would be up and down. And they were balanced and really didn't do, you know any unusual damage that's any more than your usual hanger rash but you know obviously you got to be careful you know I transfer most of mine when I'm on my own in just a minivan oh wow we're having customer service conversations lots of good comments in the review section for this model yeah this was a big this was a big release I don't know how many people were around back when this came out but you know, this was the first of its kind as far as a foam electric Tiger Cat of this size. And man, the fanfare on it was awesome. I think it's a, you know, two batteries, two 4S power, more than enough power. You know, she's not a speed demon, but she's not slow by any means. But she's just a beautiful flyer. Like with, with Warbirds, like I'm all about that. The, they present really well. And this one just with this, the big wings with the big flaps. You can really, you know, it's a good one to learn on the tricycle gear. Like, you know, to me, it's in, in a way, it's like it's it's almost Trojany in a way as far as like a trainer warbird is. You know, you could cut your teeth on a tiger cat before you get to something. Uh, before you get to something, you know, more tail dragger ish. James, what was the tool called yesterday used for flap adjustment? Um, I have to look it up. What it is, I have it over here. But it was just a dual. I mean, I gotta. I gotta, I didn't. I didn't actually go and look. Uh, Dad's ha RC hanger. But I'll show you in a second. Let me get this screwed down. All four screws. Tighten it. And this is the type of thing. Once you get this going too, you're never gonna unscrew these as well, which is nice. And this one would be one that you're gonna wanna. That I might have to weather up eventually. But nice. I, I'll, I'll, I'll get the name. I got to find it, dads. Um, you know, bear with me on that. I'll have to look through my stuff. And if I do, but we had it on the website. I'm surprised it's not there. I wonder if the manufacturer just stopped making it or we can't sell it. I forget who the main manufacturer was. You know, product, sometimes products come and go and it's not our choice in essence. But all right. So that is one wing. And now the weight is there. So let's just make, let's finish off the wing by connecting those last two, the two wires we have here, and we'll put a ribbon cable in. So throttle, so the way it works on this board, your positives are towards the fuselage, if you will. And then they're giving you gear, you got your light in, and gear door. Now these are spring-loaded gear doors, so it's just the. I was like, there's no. These are spring-loaded. Just I guess these are these boards are obviously made for other products, not just the Tiger Cat, which is cool. Come on, get that pin in there. And this is where it does not pay to have fat. If you got fat fingers, put your hands up. I hate working with these. All right, we got that. Now we're going to open our ribbon cable. And now one of the things you could put on if you wanted to at this point was the, uh, they give you a little piece of plastic that can cover the wiring. But I don't do that peripheral stuff until the very end, just in case, you know, something's wrong and I got to get back into it. Like the manual tells you to do that now, but I, I all that 
peripheral stuff. I'll get her set up and worry about that later before I do anything. But everything is now down, nice and in. So the only two things coming out of the wing are gonna be your ribbon cable and your battery lead that are gonna go into the uh, into there. Oh, and I got a little pin out on my ribbon cable, but the beauty is they slot right back in. So we'll check that. We may have to we may have to solder it or paste the ribbon cable, but no big deal. All right, so one wing done. And now we gotta do the same thing for the next wing. So I'm gonna put this on a little table I got back here. Let that rest. And we'll do the other wing. Good night, Jason. What did Jason say? Oh, I'm looking up. Can't find it either now, Daz, I see. Yeah, I'll find Find out what happened to what later, Spinny. Clue me, clue me in. I keep looking up. So, let me RC. Use tweezers, Jason. Yes, I'm James, but yes, I'll, I'll get there when once we start plugging in. Again, we're just setting it up on the table, so prior to Maiden, I will have it all worked out, but we're on time constraints here, trying to get as much of this model done, because I'd love to get it at least plugged up and show you quickly just some of the things I do with the, uh, the Admiral Gyro. Not that, again, not that this model needs a gyro, but it, it just makes it look nicer when you're flying around on those windier days, you know, because these are just large pieces of foam, so slightest bit of wind will just knock it around in the sky and you know just doesn't make it look as nice as it could look you get that gyro in there and it really just tames it down so again three wires coming out throttle landing gear and your battery lead so let's work those through first ones first get the battery lead through first because it's the longest and the toughest because this one has to go in down, up, and through. And we'll get these two leads under, but these can be done. They can really be done afterwards. After we screw it down. Yeah, they can be done after we screw it down. And then just make sure none of your wires are on top of the foam when you go to close it, or, you know, you're getting hanger rash on a section that, oh, and I'm upside down. So if there's hanger rash on a section that you know you can't see, not the worst deal, but it happens. Here we go. There we are. So let's get the screws in. Perfect. And again, using the foam so that I'm not doing too much dents and dings. But a model like these, these are, you know, just bigger models. And we're working under time. The Marshall, RC Air Marshall made it. Is that what we're saying? When will you see the molding of the F-35 V3 in factory, as you said, in factory tour video? As soon as we get back into the factory, Nabil, you know, that's uh, Alpha when he's over there. Sometimes he doesn't always have the chance to run around with a camera and do that, so... You know, and like when you're doing behind the scenes stuff like that, you got to be cautious. We got to, he's got to film it then we got to look through it. Got to make sure, you know, none of the secret sauce is really being shown. We can only show so much, you know, we're not going to give you full uninhibited access, but it's coming because we know people love that stuff. And we, Alpha shares a lot of that stuff. He's on Instagram now. He's always sharing cool behind the scenes pictures. And I love seeing that too. You know, I've never been in an actual factory before i've seen a lot of footage of factories in my day i was over in hong kong got to see warehouses a long time ago but never actually got to like shenzhen never got into china to actually see um you know just how some of these things are produced and on the grand scale more than just videos but it is cool and it's beyond my pay grade those nozzles are large man yeah large and in charge the Tiger Cat is a good model. I, I remember, actually, it was funny. One of the days I took mine out, uh, RC Air Marshal there, he goes to the same field that I fly out here in CCRC. 
and a, and a kid showed up. He, he flew a lot of flight test models, like a couple that he built himself and was for his birthday. This, the Tiger Cat was the one he wanted. And, uh, you know, he was trying to explain, it was just me and one other guy there that day. And he's trying to explain, you know, that he, he felt comfortable. He, he saw me fly mine because I had mine there. And I helped him. We, we kind of looked things over, you know, but he was like confident. And he took off and oh boy. We sprinted over to him, grabbed his transmitter, and saved his plane. I felt so bad. He used CA on his fuselage, and midway through his first down leg, the fuselage separated. And we, had to, we, we managed to save it, but it was just him and his mom there. And I'm like, oh man, if this poor kid showed up to the field that day all by himself, he would have lost his birthday present. So we told him, you know, take this back, showed him what to fix, and said, next time, come out. And uh, the guy, it was Sean, who was a president of our club at the time, uh, he ended up going out and teaching the kid how to fly it now. And it still survived to this day. You see him there a couple times, but he almost lost his tiger cat on his maiden all by himself. Sometimes overconfidence could be a killer too. Make sure you are ready. I did a little bit of that. All right, now I'm gonna just close up get these two wires through and then our wing sections are going to be done so then at this point you can almost start you know your full assembly and get to the point of getting the control horns because i like getting that done too as fast as possible when we're going live but i'm making it harder on myself do it right in front of me here we go Throttle goes in, and landing gear, that one's tough because it's pressed up against another one, that's in, and where's our last ribbon, ribbon cable goes in. And a machine gun came with me, or a cannon. Put that back in there. All right, so now that's the second wing section done. And again, I'm not putting on the plastic covers yet. To I'll, I'll hide all that later. There's no reason to do that right now while I'm still here. So I'll put this off to the side and let's just look what's gonna be the next step. I assume it's gonna be getting it all on. So let's check our fuselage. At this point, it's been well, I did, I closed it up at 12.18, so it's been 20 minutes. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to pull that out. I put glue on everything, so we are looking pretty good now, and it's time to assemble our wings. So I think at this point, I think we're going to use this. And now this model is a little heavy, so you're going to have to hold one side while you do the other side, and vice versa. And I want to make sure I have enough room. I don't knock into my transmitter or anything. So we got our two spars, so let's get those in. And they only fit one way, the thicker one up front, thinner one towards the back. And then you got your trough of where your wires are gonna go through, your hole in the fuse. And let me make sure I'm not forgetting everything else. Oh, and that's funny, they got a Dean's plug in the menu and an EC5 on another side, EC3 on the other side and an XT60. So I don't know if it comes like that in other, other places at some point, maybe it did. But then they give you a diagram of how to install it into the board, but it's pretty self-explanatory if you've done it. I'll try to get there, but let's see. First wings first, first wings first. So let's get this in. Now this was always, you know, the toughest thing is getting that through. So what I like to do is just get them up first. I want to get the first one on. You know what? We'll get this on first. I want to get. Come on, baby. All right. You know what? Let's do this way then. That's how you want to act. Gonna work it in a sec. There we go. So let's put that one in first. Then we'll put this in back into here. Then we'll get the other one. There we go. So now we are there. And now, so 
So I'm going to end up resting it on its side before I can balance it with the other wing. Again, it's one of those models. When you're at the field by yourself, you can get a helping hand. You know, it helps, but it's not, it's not necessarily imperative. So now I'm going to start sliding it in more. Pulling that up, pulling that up, pulling that up. And make sure we're in. Come on, baby. Hold it by the front. And now, there we go. Come on, baby. We are right there. Come on now. Now you're gonna do it to me. You try and do your best to not have the, uh, just making, trying to see where it, where it's hitting. It's just hitting on the, on the plastic bit. There it is. Slide it in. Pull, make sure no wires are anywhere else. Good. So I'm not, I'm not crunching any wires between the foam of the wing or anything. You want to make sure of that. And then just press as much as you can and make sure my seeing my screw holes almost. There we go. There we go. And my screw holes are so now I'm gonna hold this side and now we're gonna work the other side. Woo! It's tough to do live. Here we go. See the magic of editing. This would have all been edited out at this point. Just would have said, you know, it's the idea. But now we can balance. You get the other wing just in there, and then you got balance. So if you're at the field, it might even be easier to just balance both wings first is probably what I should have did. I'm forgetting how I used to do it when I would go to the field. And then I remember on the last one, I had an AL37 gyro. And that one I had to make like another tray to put it in there. But I like the Stability Plus gyro because it's just smaller. So it's gonna fit, should fit a lot easier. I never put one in a Tiger Cat, so that'll be new for me today with the, uh, with the Admiral 6 channel. Stability plus. So it's that first initial contact. There we go. Press from here. Press a little towards the back. Press a little towards the front. And there we go, man. And look at that on the table. That's a big bird. It's a beautiful looking plane, as you can see, and all that weight. It's amazing how on the Tiger Cat, the fuselage like is almost nothing. I mean, I wonder what it felt like, would have felt like to fly that. So that is, that is awesome. So I will try, I think if I'm gonna have to plug it in, should I do a top down shot? Let me come over to the comment section and take a little sec. No, FMS didn't discontinue their Tiger Cat, did they? That's crazy. I don't know if I can do what James is doing. Building a plane on live streaming. Yeah, man. Gary, there's definitely some explicatives that sometimes want to come out. The worst, though, for me is if, like, cut your fingernails before, because I don't know about you, but I'll do... I'll just, like, put a scratch on the wing accidentally sometimes. You're just like, ah, you know? I'm sure there's some finger marks just by doing that. You know, that first snug fit is, is, is always tough. You know, the first time you're putting it together. But now the only things we need to plug in up here. So this is easy. There's actually nothing to show guys. Cause on the top, it's just the ribbon cables. So all we're putting, all we're going to put in is one ribbon cable. And then I want to see, I'm just hoping that other ribbon cable with the loose, with the loose pin, if I'm going to be okay here. What direction does it go? One of my ribbon cables had a loose pin, so I just want to make sure I put it back in proper direction. As long as it hits and meets, I'm not going to fly it like that, but 
it'll work for the sake of today before I just have to fix it later because I'm definitely not doing that. Oh, and then you still have your elevator and rudder. Don't go into this board here. Remember those first two wires that we pulled from the fuse? They're going to go direct to your transmitter. So everything else, throttle, um, landing gear, flaps, aileron are all going to be coming through the board. And the uh, elevator and rudder are separate. All right. So now that's in there like so. And we have that. And now... You know, my next step, obviously, we're going to plug in the receiver and then I'm going to do some control horns because if I'm going to show, obviously going to show the gyro how we set it up, we got to have the surfaces working. So bear with me, boys and girls, if there's any girls out there, too, you guys you know Lori, this would be Lori Boozer. She could totally fly this Lori Miller. This is like a trainer. This would be a perfect warbird to learn on again this i remember flying this i was nervous because this was at the time this was one of the biggest aircraft i had ever flown you know you guys know my history that we didn't have that many stuff that was that big you know the specialty was the smaller stuff but uh you know so this one was like it was intimidating for me when i took it to the field but it made me start to realize whoa bigger does fly better and then you get to the black horse stuff and then you're like oh man you know the bigger they are the almost easier they get. So, all right, I'm gonna move this. Oh, we gotta do the we gotta do the horizontal too. What am I forgetting? I didn't even look at the tail yet. So I'm gonna move this over to here. And now we're gonna work on the tail. Now the tail, super easy, guys. On the tail, there's just a hole for your spar here, and again, it's gonna meet. And as far as the book goes, I couldn't see why. They would want you because it's two screws. You're going to use the four remaining screws here because you used all eight of the three by 12s from the middle package were used for the two uh, engine pods. And then there's four screws left of the flush mount. They're going to be here. Yep. For the stab. And then you have four screws for the wings to attach, you know, that you can remove easy. Those are the ones the quick connect, if you will. So when you're taking it apart, so let's slot this in. Come on, come on, baby. Here we go. And that first time, <laughs> here comes chairs for explicatives. Trying to, trying to do this the hard way. I gotta see it. Let's get. Ah, there we go. And actually, and the plastic has two nice grooves as well that if you wanted to put some glue on it, you could, but, you know, depending on your transportation situation, you may, you know, you may need to take this off occasionally. You know, especially if, like, you're moving, you know, it would be a whole lot easier to, to wrap up just a straight fuselage or something. So I wouldn't bother. If it doesn't, if the manual doesn't tell me to glue it, I'm not gluing it. And this manual doesn't say anything about glue on this section. Just make sure your surfaces are working. Oh, and like we did yesterday, all the foam hinges on your surfaces, just work them a little bit. They do have nylon hinges in there as well, but there is foam connecting them on the uh, thing. I just like to work them through. Don't let your servo do that work. No reason to put the extra, you know, the extra tension on them. This is all nylon hinge on the rudder, which is beautiful. So you can see that's not a foam hinge at all. And, oh, and nylon on the aileron as well. And then your flaps are just a little, little paint to free them up. You know, when they paint dry a little bit. There we go. A little glue. All right, we freed up all the surfaces. So now let me finish off with the screws that I need. And where'd I put my little baggie? And my tray. And I want to see what, what's going on over here. It is a good looking plane there, Marshall. You've probably seen it there, right? Wow, and a customer service guy just asked me a, a side question. Obviously, has no idea that I'm on live with everybody else. So you're going to have to wait, Pete. 
Sorry, brother. So, Evan, so how's everybody doing? It's one of my most favorite flying planes, even in the wind. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the funny thing. I remember, I think Stuart had done a video for this one where it was super windy. And, uh, yeah, with those big flaps, I could totally see how it's almost in a way like a... Like, it's got cub-like tendencies. You know, I used to love flying my high-wing cubs on a super windy day and just parking it in the wind and letting it... All right, you just got to drive in these. So it's four screws to put in your, your horizontals, two on each side. So just bear with me. I don't know if the screws are going to work. fit let's see is this gonna work for me or am I gonna jam the foam now nope. tip is to I use the I bought one of these guys for your main wing screws so much easier dude something really simple like this I think it was 10 bucks maybe 15 bucks little Ryobi and it's got just enough torque where the second it stops but to get the wing screws on and off because you know the worst is at a show, and I'm sure Rich could attest to this, but when you've got about 20, 30, 40 models that you've got to disassemble to pack up, reassemble, then disassemble to pack up again to leave the session, you get tired of taking wing screws on and off. You know, even though it's fun, there's definitely parts of the job that you're just like, oh, this is annoying. And I like to do everything on my own to make sure it's done right. Mm -mm -mm. Save so much time, right, Dave? For the for the models where it fits. Certain models though, like sometimes the the screw is just a little too close to the fuselage. So you'd either be at a bad angle or you'd end up just denting the foam. But like, it works for most of our models. That's hard to see on this side of the camera. I'm not gonna turn the plane all the way around. Get them in. These are the flush screws. So once you get them in all the way, they'll be flat straight you won't see and the last one one more and then you have a virtually completed assembly minus all the peripheral bits and stuff that you can get to later but I'm not gonna worry about those for the sake of this video the antennas the tubes like let's not get crazy that's pretty self-explanatory but I also love it. I do have the matching paint from Home Depot for this one from my old one, and it was perfect match. So, really nice. Really nice. So, now it's time to plug in our Admiral Stability Plus Gyro. So, first things first, with the Admiral Stability Plus, um, on the back, and I, I wish I would've got a picture. It's hard to show, but there are dip switches on there and if you watch my series if you ever done this you got to set it up you get there are four different settings there's normal so your normal aircraft with uh the your main three surfaces aileron elevator rudder then the delta wing the v-tail and flapper on settings so the beauty about this so really five settings or you could turn it all off entirely the gyro will just be a six channel receiver you don't you know you don't need to use the gyro at all so we want to set it up for normal, which means the J, they call it the J4, J5, and J6 dip switches. So J4 and J5 are on, and J6 is off. So that's the first thing you do before anything, because if you plug it in, everything will be off, and you'll be like, this thing doesn't work. If you just leave it as is, everything's off. So J4 and J5 on my dip switches. Next things, next things next. And we'll have to get into a combo, but we'll insert our bind plug where it tells us. And now we're going to install everything in the plane. So I'm not doing, again, I'm not doing my props. I'll worry about that later because I don't want to kill myself on air. These props can be mean. So now 
rudder, gear, receiver. Where are my wires? Am I missing something in the uh, in the top? So no, those plugged in there. And now we're looking in the other box. And in my baggie, we want to get it all bound up. I'm not giving me where that goes. Ah, okay. So they park them all in the main, in the main, in the main section. So this is, these will go into my receiver, I believe. Gear, no steering, gear door. All right, guys, I'm gonna have to take it off this. It's a little too tall right here. So I'm gonna lay it down to do this on my phone. Get it plugged up and in. A while since I put one of these together. There's my receiver. Now I gotta figure out where I'm gonna mount it. I think I'm gonna end up mounting it right. There's a little plate in the back that I'm gonna do it on. But go they're all on the opposite side so that's what we're gonna do we'll re-put these back in they were hiding in the back apologies for that so I pulled them all out when I shouldn't have but one two I just got lost in my in my uh, assembly here for a second thinking wait where are all my wires to plug in they they have them plugged in one side but they were like tucked away so I thought they were plugged in on the other side I'm like wait a minute that's not right but it was my mistake so before I contacted customer service and yelled and complained just take a second to think it through all right flaps okay so we got five wires coming out of the board so again those are throttle rudder aileron flap and gear then you have okay so rudder coming from the back wants you to go into you can so i guess you could go direct the rudder into the receiver if you'd like but there is a port on the uh on the board for the rudder so the only one that's not accounted for is the elevator and the elevator they give you the most wire so that everything pretty much depending on where you're going to put your receiver, they all sort of even out almost perfectly. So we'll do it the way they want it, want it to be done. So we'll go throttle into throttle, aileron into aileron. We'll go elevator into elevator. We'll go rudder into rudder. Then gear into gear and flap into auxiliary one on there and with the stability plus gyro when you pull the bind plug that becomes a, a seventh port so you do get seven channel uh option on here if you need it but now that's all plugged in so then as far as batteries go i have two four thousands two three thousands uh, either or will work. So I'll just grab the fours for now because I believe that's what I always flew it with with the four thousands. And let me get my transmitter. Again, my 3D printed cover. Love. Uh, RC Informer, how many channels is my receiver? That's the Admiral six channel. They call it the six channel stability plus, but you do get a seventh channel on it. So if you need it, but you only need six for this one. So we just want to get it bound up. And I think I already have it on my old Tiger Cat model. Just checking. Yep, it's already there. So turning off the transmitter. And if you remember yesterday, I was too close when I did it. So let's do one. Let's do the other. All right. Pushing the button. Stay away. Everything's flashing. 
I'm seeing. Bind complete. Bind complete. Alright. So there we go. That's the aileron. Flaps, and I had I had them on a delay. That's my elevator servo. That's my rudder servo. I hear the gear. The nose gear working. And let's drop our gear. And then she'll stand there. Oh, and the gyro is on. You can hear it. Look at that. All right. So then let's see. I had set the switch. Let's see. Okay, because it starts out in combo A. So I don't know if you guys can see the lights. I'll I'll show you in a second. But I already set up the transmitter as you your as you should for your stability plus gyro. And instead of the bind button, I put it on the switch H because you get three combos with the Admiral Stability Plus Gyro. You get uh, combo A, which is gyro on, or recovery mode, um, which is how I like to set up the gyro, and I'll show you that in a second. Then combo B is gyro off with the recovery mode, or combo C, which is gyro on or gyro off. And I fly it with gyro on, gyro off. So if I need it, I have it. If I want to turn it off, I can turn it off. That's the way I do it. But when I set it up, I use that recovery mode because if you leave it in recovery mode and you tilt the aircraft, you'll see that your control surfaces will stay. So you're not guessing when you're trying to set up your transmitter. I showed this in the video. Uh, it actually helps because you can actually see the way they go. So um, when we have to correct our directions, but I want to get all the, I'm going to have to get all the control horns on now at this time. So before I do any of that, I'm just going to put a little bit of tape on it just to mount it so it's not getting too crazy on me when it's level and then we'll we can rip this back off later and put a little better i like the uh i like real 3m double-sided tape when i'm finalizing it and getting the 3m tape off when you're live getting the second section of tape is it's never fun. What time we got? It's one o'clock, so we're not doing too bad. We're already at this section. Obviously, I'm not going to get to the decals and stuff. And I don't think these are water slider. I would have spent a little more time, and I'm actually going to rip this. Put some of that right down here. So I don't want to mount it too much, just enough so it doesn't move. I'm going to put it back here for now, and then we'll get to it a little later. Right there on the spot. Stay there. And then, actually, the other thing I can do. So I have. So one thing about the Admiral Stability Plus Gyro, you automatic you automatically get a remote master gain. It's on the knob. So I turn the knob all the way up. The knob all the way up is gonna is gonna give you whatever your max on your potentiometers are that you set on the gyro. When it comes out, they are halved. So right now they're all at 50. That's not where I'm gonna leave them. We're not at this point yet. But, so you hear this, well, you heard the, you hear the gyros going nuts because I have this maxed all the way up. Let's turn it all the way down. Now, barely anything. So remote master gain. So you're still getting some gyro, even if you're all the way zeroed out. But now it's not going to be acting all silly on me while I'm trying to get every all the control horns and everything on. So, you know, just something help. Oh, take your bind plug off. So that next time I power it up, I know we've all done that. Leave the bind plug in. You're like, it's not binding. Oh, whoops. Let's put that through. And... I just want to see if that's going to fit where I need it. That's not going to fit where I need it. Based on where I have this, I'm, I have to get this all. So we can do it without. That's fine. We'll put the cover on later. Let's get this back. And now let's get started with the rod so then we can see exactly what the gyro is doing. Because right now we have no clue if I have no clue if all my directions are even reversed or not at this point. So. Let's make sure we do one at a time. So what do they give you? And I always like the, the book I see here. We should have some flaps, probably two. Oh. So all the flaps inboard and outboard get the same size. So how many overall rods do we get? We got one, 
two, and I like to just divide them out by by eyeballing it by the size first, and then you can deduce <laughs> based on the manual. You do a little Sherlock Holmes on the manual. All right, so it looks like I got four of one size. Those are probably my flaps. They're 63. Ailerons are my biggest one. They're 95, so I have two of those. My elevator is 58, so which is a little smaller than these four for the flaps, so that's him. And my rudder is 80, which is in between. So that's how I know. Easier, easy way to do it. Just do it that way. Deduction based on what the book is. The Admiral Seaver works with Spectrum Radios. Yes, it, it works. You know, it's DSMX, so it will work perfectly. And the price is right on those. Oh, and I could get rid of this piece of foam. Get out of here. And right now, I don't think the manual calls for anything special on a Tiger Cat. I just want to make sure. All right, I'm going to try to do this quick. Aileron is one to one. So first thing I do, where's the ball link? So I put in the control horn first, and then I latch it on. And I think I saw this in R.C. Baker does it. Uh, R.C. R.C. Baker. R.C. Informer does it this way. R.C. Baker. He should be R.C. Baker. That would be funnier. All right, this way. I think I saw him do it in one of his videos of a motion problem. I'm like, oh, that's a good idea because that's always the last thing I used to do. And sometimes it's harder to do. But just something simple like that. And then even though it's ball lengths, just use your thumb. Slap it on there. Now we're going to go for the outboard flap. And this is uh, one to one as well. So take your clevis again. Ball links on the outside. So one lock it in before you attach it to the to the ball link before you attach it to the horn press that up and let's extend it out extend it out extend it out extend it out rc baker would be rich in the kitchen totally totally the rc baker he could be the rc baker that would work all right, outboard flap, looking good. And I'm not gonna be perfect, I could always do that later, but I want everything to be attached first. I mean, really for the gyro, I don't need the flaps, but while we're here doing it, might as well just do it. Inboard flaps are gonna be the inside, one-to-one -one as well, you're telling me. They give you both. Well, that's silly since the flaps are the same. Well, they do give you flap outside, flap inside, push rod size and the holes, but it's all the same. They could have just said flaps. But somebody must have liked their diagram so much that they wanted to leave it. So now I'm getting down. Can't see that I'm here. Gotta get underneath a little bit. One, two, three. Boom. Now let's just check. Oh, I didn't check my throttle. All right, throttle's working. Actually, let me check my gear. Let's check that. Oh yeah, so I guess my pin is working fine on my ribbon cable, or else something wouldn't have worked the right way, but now I could sort of get rid of that. We could do the other side with the gear down. Nice. I love the navy blue, the navy blue tires, uh, you know, hubcaps and stuff, rims, if you will. All right, we're doing the aileron next, the next biggest one. On this side, we said everything here, so everything on the wings is one to one. So just keep that in mind when you're doing it. I like that, it's easy. And I had already set this up on my old Tiger Cat. The only thing is when you do that, make sure you, if you ever get a new model of one that you already have, just if you if you have manual trim in there, just remember to put everything back to zero. Because since that was one of the first planes I set up, I had, I had some manual trim in there and I never went back and mechanically corrected it. And now at this point, you always wanna, you could just get these things mechanically perfect and you barely need trim when you take off just a couple of notches, it makes your life a lot easier when you're flying. 
I'll tell you, when I first started flying, I didn't even know what trim was or did. I just, <laughs> I just held my sticks and was like, oh, it's flying straight, and I'm just holding it this way. So we're fine. Let's go back outboard. Twisty, twisty, twisty. Oh, lock it in. It's so much easier to lock on the rod first. Can't believe I never did that in the past. I would always attach the ball link and then fight sometimes, depending on the direction to go through. That's what experience from the baker will teach you. All right, and we got our last one here, and then we'll only have two more, three more. So majority is all happening on the wings. Six of the rods for the wings, and one for the rudder, and one for the elevator. And it's all ball links, which is nice. Compared to the Hawk yesterday, had a couple of, we had one ball link on the BAE Hawk. But now, and there you go, hanger rash. 101. You're trying to be good. You're trying to be a good boy. All right, one, two, three. There we go. Let's see. Flaps. Oh, those aren't my flaps. There we go. Left, right, left, right. All right. Don't have to reverse. Don't have to reverse. And again, even when you're working with the gyro uh, transmitter, there are direction controls on the receiver. That is not to control the direction your servos will go. It's to control the correction of the, uh, of the gyro on those control surfaces. You still have to reverse that within your transmitter if you, uh, when you get to that point. So next one, the biggest one. The next biggest one of the two I have left is gonna be for the rudder, which is on this side. So let's just get the rudder on. And that is, rudder is one to one as well. Almost done here. Let me get it locked on. One. I'm sorry, a little quieter today. I don't know if it's the rain or what it is, but this model is just a little more a little more to it than yesterday. Yesterday was like the hawk is a breeze to put together compared to this. Why Flightline don't make a B-17? Well, Freewing did make a B-17. Remember, guys, Freewing makes Flightline. They just rebranded uh, to have a difference between jets and warbirds. Um, but before they did that, the old crow is still labeled Freewing. And they had a B-17, but... Um, yeah, it was one of the first models. I think it's even before Motion's time. And, uh, you know, I don't know if it was... It was probably great at the time. I don't know if it would hold up to today's standards. And, I, you know, like our B-24 right now is the standard for the B-24, I think, in Foam Electric. But I think the Hobby King B-17 is probably the better B-17. Um, it's a good one. You know, the H. I remember flying that one. That's a good B-17. Fun. Definitely fun to fly a big bomber sometimes, but you know, it's a bomber. That's why I like a warbird. You want something that you can be mildly aerobatic, thinking you're gonna, you know, you're dueling with somebody in the sky. Bombers, though, always get a good look. The B 24, whenever you take it out, though, a lot of people always appreciate it because it does look and it's fun. It is definitely fun to cruise around with, but sometimes you just want more action. Is that Alpha here? Alpha is in. He is in, and elevator's the last one, and that is also one to one. So everything, so everything is uh, one to one from the servo to the control horn. Well, obviously you're gonna get one because the ball links are already attached, but as far as the servo arms, everything is one. Let me lock it in. Rudder straight. <laughs> Now make sure your elevator is straight, as straight as possible. Twisting it out, twisting it out. And if you could see me in the corner, that's why we have the wide angle lens. See the whole table. Boom, and let me check my direction now because that was the last two control. Up, down, up, down, nice. 
Do I have rates? Oh, there's my high rates. And rudder. Left. All right. All right. All the directions are good. So now we can get going with the gyro itself. So again, I have it mounted, not in the permanent spot, but you have to have the gyro mounted, all the, the wiring on the gyro to the back, flat, and the, the sticker, if you will, goes to the front of the aircraft. So now, like I said, I forget which, which way I'm in, but let me, I'm gonna turn up my knob, so now my gains are gonna be crazy high, and you can see right now, they are correcting. Now I could do it, I could tell right off the bat that my ailerons are at least correct. But what I do is, since I'm in combo A, I'm gonna go to the recovery mode when I set up this, because check out what this does. When I turn, they hold there. So right now, if you guys can see on the aileron, since I'm turning, it's correcting me to go back to level. So I know that my ailerons are fine. They are correcting the right way. And I don't have to like look at it, but I keep snapping it to make sure, is it right? Is it right? I keep it in recovery mode. And look at that. And if I turn it this way, you can see it's going up. My aileron's going down. And this one's going up because it wants to correct me straight. So we're good. So now we can go over to our tail. I'm going to point the nose down. And you can see my elevator go up. It should always go in the direction that the surface is going. So that's right, it wants to correct me that way. This wants to correct me straight because it's in a recovery mode. So I wouldn't want to fly in recovery mode and then rudder when I turn this way. Let's see. Now rudder is hard because rudder will always work and then stop because you're always getting a new straight on rudder. So right now, the rudder is reversed because when I turn the tail, towards my direction, the rudder should jut out towards me. So as long as I have that right, so now that means on the gyro itself, there are three other dip switches. You had the first three that set up what type of aircraft you want the gyro to do. So normal, uh, aileron, control surface, combination, delta, flapper on, V-tail. Then your first three switches are just one, two, three, and it says aileron, elevator, rudder. Since they're all there, I know the rudder I want to reverse, so I'm gonna just push that one over. So now, let's check, you go back and check it again. I'm gonna put the rudder right face. As it turns to me, the tail turns to me, the rudder is moving towards me. And that means it is all correcting in the right direction. So, now I'm gonna pretend that's where this gyro is gonna live. I'm not gonna try to, because you want access to it. Now, now I know my directions are good. Now it's all about how much gains do you want on your gyro. Because again, and the combo. So now I want to do the combo is what I'm going to do. And to do that, I am going to unplug. And unplug. Let's move these out of there. And she'll sit on her tail when, uh, when there's no batteries in there. So... We found that out. Luckily, I had the foam down there, but the hanger rash we spoke about. Does the 637 have dip switches on it? I don't know what that means. You got to jerk it to see the rudder move. Yeah, I get, <laughs> I get it. I get it, RC Air Marshal. But again, you want the control surface to face you. So now, with the Admiral Stability Plus Gyro, this is tough. You need two bind plugs to do this. So I know it only comes with one, but we're under the assumption that by the time you're getting to this, you're going to have two bind plugs. So I have my first one, and then I'll get the second one. I forget where I threw it. Oh, there it is. You need two. So now on the gyro itself, you got to pull out the flap, aux one, the landing gear, and the rudder. And then what you do, you take two bind plugs, and you're going to go across to get into the setting. So you go across the closest set to the uh, sticker and then the very next one. So the farthest port is going to be uh, not open. And I'm going to I'm going to give you a top down shot. I haven't gone back to this, but oh, you know what I'm going to give you? Oh, I could give you. Let's do this. 
Let's see if this works. The handheld. So here we are. So if you guys can see and let it, this is an auto focus one. But if you guys can see that, that's how they go across the back three ports. That's going to allow us to get into the, uh, the combo settings. Bad hair day, James. Man, my hair goes where it wants to go. That's because I'm working. I'm not worried about it at this point. But, um, so that's that. Now, oh, and I could show you the switches, the dip switches. So if you look, let's see if it'll autofocus. It's tough to see, but on the, on the left side of the screen, you see aileron, elevator, rudder. Oh, this thing is a terrible autofocuser. Aileron, elevator, rudder. The rudder is moved over. And then the next three are J4, J5, and J6. And J4 and J5 were moved over. And J6, that set us up for a normal setting, which, again, that's on our website. That's in the when you get it. And it's on the back is how you set up those dip switches um, when I move the tape out of the way. But let me pop this down here for a second. And let's go back to the main one. So... Now you got me thinking about my hair, which is ridiculous. Who cares? But here we go. So now we want to plug back in. And you're going to need just a little, probably your X-Acto knife will work well. And this is how we're going to switch the combos. So I'm going to use, I'm going to use my 3000s. Got them here. Boop. Now, it doesn't matter if your transmitter's on or not for this, especially if you have your props off, then it really doesn't matter because you should be setting this up before anything. So now everything's flashing. There is a switch in the, a mode button that you're gonna push and hold. And we start in combo A and the light combinations are what determines what combo you're in, but we know we're in combo A, so we have to do this twice to get to combo C. So here we go, one, let go, and now it's a different set of lights. And then another, the lights go out, let go. And then it's the slow back and forth from just green to green and red. Just green to green and red. So now we are in combo C. So now we gotta unplug, pull the bind plugs. Actually, I'll leave those there to keep the weight down. And then put back in the other, put back in our rudder. gear and I guess our flap even though we don't need the last two for this part of the demonstration but now that's there and now we're gonna plug back in bind plugs out one and two and I'm gonna have to calibrate the ESCs as well haven't gotten there yet but now I am in, so I have my gain all the way up, and check it out, a little bit, and let's see what happens when I, so that's gyro on, no gyro, so the light changes, we're in combo C, so gyro off, and gyro on, and I have my pot turned, I have my auto gain turned all the way up on this, but now, where do you go with the potentiometers itself? That's a whole nother thing. I prefer on every model I do, I turn, I turn the, uh, I turn the pots to 25. I do a quarter turn and that's how I always go. If I, I could always add more later. Um, you never want too much because your plane, if you've ever flown with too much gains on your gyro, your plane just starts shaking. But that's the beauty of having the remote master gain. So what I'll do is I'll set it up to a quarter I'll leave the gain knob turned all the way up. I'll start flying. If I see that wobbly, at least I can do this and, and get to a certain point um, where it's flying right. Or, at the very worst, I like to be in combo C because I could get out of it. If it's too much and I don't even want to bother, just turn it off for the time being and get going. Again, the gyro, I don't use a gyro because it makes me fly any better or worse. I'm still I'm me on the sticks. It just... The wind, you want it because the wind is going to make your model. It's going to do the, all the other work that you don't have to do, that you really can't control, is why we're putting a gyro on a model like this anyway. Well, let me see. All right, gyro's still on. So 
I would turn down my pot with a little flathead screwdriver. And I'm just going to give it a little quarter turn on all of them. And that's just been where I started. I think Steve Hodges helped me do this at the first time um, at field a long time ago. And uh, that's always where I go. So if I always want more. So say I'm in the air and I find that the quarter the quarter um, turn on the potentiometer itself is too wobbly and I end up turning my knob halfway down. Then when I land, I will turn the pot another half click and turn this all the way back up there. When I fly, it should be where it was uh, on that first flight. But then I always have the option, you know, or you might want to leave it, but always remember about that remote master gain on these because if you forget and you go to a different model and, you know, your pot was turned up, you might be like, whoa, it was it was fine the other day. You might have hit this in the in the thing. Always remember that, or disable your knob if you don't want it at all. You can do that in the transmitter itself. But so that's pretty much it, guys. That's a set up uh, flight line Tiger Cat. I could you know I could sit there and do the decals, but I don't think we're going to do that. It's already 120. Um, is there anything else you want to see? Comes with a tree radar too. James, what do we got? Can you help me get James to see the B29 thing? Evan, what B29 thing? Repost it if you're still there. What B29 thing? Are you asking me if Flightline's making one? Because you're lucky. I don't design them. I don't, I don't make them. I just find out when they're coming so then we can film them. That's the, that's the beauty and market them, you know? That's, that's my extent of uh, what I learn. Alpha tells me what I need to know, when I need to know it. But uh, if, is there a B-29 coming? Alpha would say, there's always, you know, everything's coming eventually. You know, I mean, the people who produce these aircraft in, in China, they love aircraft just as much as everyone else, so they wouldn't do it. So I 100% believe they want to see everything possible that they could, but you got to do it one at a time and, you know, just one at a time. But a B-29, personally, do I want to see a B-29? It depends, you know, it, 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 I want it to be scaled to the B-24, which means you're talking probably a three meter wingspan in a foamy. Uh, you know, that's a lot of plane. And then, and then push come the shove, it's a bomber, you know, like what's a bomber gonna do in uh, you know, I, I, I don't mind it, but like, it's fun for first couple passes. But I don't know if you'll be, you know, the beauty, it's like, like the airliner. I love flying the airliner, but I love the airliner more for touch and goes because it'll just, it'll stay on the nose. So it's, it's a lot of fun landing an airliner and trying to make it look scale. So it gives you that feel. Whereas, you know, I don't know how much fun I'd have with a B-29 other than just some beauty passes and to say, there it is, you know, there's a Nola Gay, um, you know, it's beautiful. But I, there's a lot of other aircraft, me personally, that I'd want to see way before a B-29, but you're lucky. I don't, I don't get to make that call at all. So there we go. Some decals. And again, all the decals. So they give you two sets, but these are vinyl or these are stickers. So these are press the sticker on and peel the, the plastic off. So there's really, I mean, if you don't know how to do that, um, I, I don't, you know, no help you, but water slides, if there were water slides, I would have helped you. And then the prop assembly we could do. I mean, I guess you do have your little bits and pieces. So there are some guns and cannons that go along um, on the inside. There's plastic holes. We could show that. And then the prop, I'm not going to bother putting the prop on yet till we do it because I didn't want to accidentally hurt myself. But which one would you like to, which one would you like to see, James? Which one of which? Makes that nice crunch. I'm trying to look up. I see, uh, Reckon there's no way to be able to do that. TN at TN Scoot. Which one would you like to see, James? Inquiring minds want to know which one of which. I'm sorry, I might have missed it. So, pop it back in there. I'll hang in the chat with you. Which one plane next? Oh, I mean, just which plane would I like to see next? Um, from if if I could say anything or like one from Flightline, one from Freewing. I mean, man, I would say. You know, as far as like warbirds go, I would love to see a big P-40. 
I, I always liked P40. I love the little, big P47 would be awesome, like, to match it. But, like, I love the Corsair so much. I'd love to see a Zero that matches it in 1600 millimeter. You know, I love the single engine. I would like to see Flightline, more bigger single engine Warbirds would be awesome for me. Um, as far as jets go, man, there's a lot of jets out there uh, that we'd want to see. But I think I'm with some other people, something with like the Canards, because uh, I haven't gotten a chance since I've been here to do anything with that. So, you know, a bigger jet that can, you know, perform like that would be would be kind of cool. So like, what is that, like a Raphael or something would be fun. Private jets, I mean, it's like we got the AL-37. You know, I don't know if I want to see another private jet right away. But also, honestly, one of the things I'd love to see is if Flightline does it or something. But some World War I foamies that go together easy. You know, I would love a nice 1600 millimeter, you know, World War One bird that can just, you know, a nice triple wing or something, triplane or biplane would be awesome. James, what what you should I run on my future F-35, a 50C or 30C, 5,000 milliamp success? Um, the more C rating, the more juice you're going to get, um, the more punch you're going to get in your battery. So for a jet, higher the C is better almost always, but it will add a little more weight. But if I were you in a deal with the F-35, I'd go with the 60C Admiral Pro 4000 is what I fly that one on, and you get plenty of punch on that bad boy. Yeah, a Fokker DR1, something like that would be awesome. Horton 229. But also, I like the silly, silly, sort of silly planes too. I forget. I don't know if the 229, which is the German plane that was off, like the canopy is here. The pilot was sitting here uh, on like one side of the wing. And uh, we saw it at Nephi. Me and Alex saw a guy had a, uh, had a balsa version of it. And it's just so awkward. And I love it because it's just so silly. It's like, their kid drew it on the table and the guy was just a good engineer and said, I'll make it fly, you know, <laughs> let's, let's get that one going. Like stuff like that would be funny. Favorite current free wing jet, James, uh, from Jameson. I'm not gonna lie, I'm like everyone else. It changes as I fly them. Right now, my favorite that I've been loving taking the field is the Venom. The 90 millimeter Venom has been my absolute favorite because of the sound, um, the way, it, the stability of it, the power of it. It's handle chops through the wind like nobody's business. I, I love it right now. But like six months ago, it was the F-22. You know, a couple months before that, it was the F-18. You know, it, it, it definitely changes. But, but really, my overall thing for me would be like a World War I bird. You know, some World War I line that was, that was big. And I'm excited. I can't wait to start seeing more of the, the little guys, the little flight line ones. Um, you know, the flight line 850 millimeters. I hope they, they do some more of those coming soon, too. Would be awesome. Jared, a Stuka, 1,600mm Stuka would be amazing if they could get the sound in it. They would have to put the sound in it. You can make it sound when it dives. That would be unbelievable. Flying my Tiger. Oh, Mr. T, he was just flying his tiger cat out of the field. Well, I can't wait to remade this. And oh, well, I have it here. I said I'd do this yesterday. You know, 1600 millimeter. So let me put this on the table this way. And I'll I'll just slap the, uh, the P38 above it. Just show you, same wingspan, but you know, two different, two different styles. Ooh. Of course, I'm hitting my light above, working in space. But I love the P38. Always been one of my favorites. I don't think anybody like it, so let's see there. Look at that. Nice. Tough to see with this wide angle lens. But same wingspan, you know, but the Tiger Cat definitely sits taller than the, uh, the P38. But to me, they both fly pretty pretty darn similar i would just think the tiger cat a little more wing area on it a little more trainer ish but since they both have the tricycle gear you could probably fly a p38 with relative ease as well don't fall down on me please that's the last thing i need Ugh. Mm -mm. 
She barrel rolls like a brick. Love it. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna unplug her. Oh, you got wingtip lights on this bad boy. You got the wing light in the front. And that's it, three lights, right? Three lights on her. And again, I'll finish her up later. It's a lot to do. And actually, I have to go do essential shopping in a little bit. So I have to trek out like the Walking Dead out here. Just feels so awkward to be outside sometimes in this. It's crazy. Where is my stand? I'm going to put her up on the stand for the time being. So I don't like my tires to get to get any sort of warping or anything. So how about you guys? I hang every single one of my planes or put them in a cradle. I never, I never store my planes on their tires at all. So let's talk guys. We're still here. It's 1.36. I'd go for another nine, 10 minutes, but I'm actually funny. I finished this faster than I, than I did the, uh, the BA Hawk. And this one had the gyro and everything. Are there any other questions you got about this one while I have it out here? And as far as tomorrow, guys, I, I said uh, yesterday, I said tomorrow we might not go live at noon. So, um, but I'm checking the weather and it's looking like Thursday might be an even better day than tomorrow. So I may be here at 12 o'clock live tomorrow, but I'll let everyone know uh, about an hour before I'm going to go. So, um, <laughs> RC Air Marshal, don't do it, James. Um, I'll let everybody know an hour or two before on social media. You know, if you're following, I, I always make posts to let you know when we're going to go. Um, but worst case, it might be Thursday where I go later in the day. You know, again, just later in the day because we'd have to leave. Again, the field we're going to go to is about an hour drive there and back. And Thursday is actually looking picture perfect. So um, even better than tomorrow. Tomorrow's looking like 16 mile per hour winds, but sunny. But I'm seeing four mile per hour winds on Thursday. So it's looking like an absolutely perfect day. And I'm up in the 70s. We're in the high 70s here. It was 80 degrees. Uh, 86 degrees on Saturday here. It was absolutely gorgeous. So, been enjoying the outside time, even if you can't go and fly at our mega, at our regular field, which is awesome. Is Alpha still with us? Is Alex still with us? Definitely Thursday, Mr. T. On board camera. Evan wants that. Oh, they'll be on board camera for what we're filming. There might be on board camera for this one somewhere. I don't know if I ever did it for this. So where would you put it? Always put it on your CG near the fuselage. Or if you're going out, way outboard, put a counterweight on the other side. So if I, whenever I do the onboard with, with that, sometimes I'll put one looking towards the nose on the top of the wing and then one on the bottom of the wing, a run cam, looking back towards the tail and it'll help balance you out. But, you know, ask me how I know don't put one run cam up. These are just foamies. One, the little weight of a run cam out on one side will completely throw off your uh, everything. No, uh, RC Air Marshal, Stone Mountain is closed, buddy. So I'm going to be going up to NG North Georgia. North Georgia had closed back in 2017, but they've reopened it. And they went another 30 minutes north on uh, Dawsonville. Um, but I don't think they're in a state park. They just got the land is theirs up there. So they don't have to close. They don't have to really, you know, Georgia is still not under a, a strict watch. It happens tonight. They they say like where you're not supposed to, um, you know, go out for non-essentials. So if you could still go out, but all the state parks are closed. So my field was in a state park. That's why our field is closed. And the other NGMA, that's it. That's where I was going to go. I talked to Mac Norwood. Uh, the other day he hasn't really got back to me i was thinking of joining that club anyway because they have a nice grass field bigger space you guys see i'm doing a lot of the bigger balsa stuff ccrc doesn't work there so i would definitely take the you know take the i don't mind traveling an hour especially because i'm on the clock when i do it um but so i don't mind going up there to travel and then come back but uh you know i wanted to give it a shot it just seemed like perfect timing mac wanted me to come up earlier in the year but the weather was terrible so i said i don't want to go up there to uh you know, for no reason, like uh, just to go up there for a windy, cloudy day. You know, I wanted to go up there with something. So we have something to film and might as well run up there. So 
Let's go. Take me with you. I don't know if you'll fit in the car with what we got going, RC Air Marshal. We got to have those back seats. You have to follow us, tag along. But we're not sure. If, if I go live tomorrow at 12, that means we didn't go out and film and we're going to go Thursday. And it's looking like Thursday will probably be the best time to go. So that's going to cut into Alex's editing time. But we might get there. We might try to leave here early, bright and early Thursday morning. Get there. Only need about two, three hours to get it done. And then, uh, and then come back. So I'm going to give that club a shout. But yeah, Stone Mountain RC, they, uh, they had to close down too because they're in a state park. That's Jared Kirby's here. Thank you guys so much for joining and hanging out as usual. Now tomorrow, oh, we got some time. Um, so whether it's tomorrow or Thursday, but I still, you know, I'm definitely going to go live both days, just a matter with what. So I have an L39 we could build. I could get the airbrush out, maybe airbrush up a tank um, for a show. We've got the 64 millimeters, the F-18 and the and the uh, A-10. I really want to do those. I've never seen those out of the box. So I think the next show, I'll at least do one of them. I think I'll do the A-10 tomorrow, the 64 millimeter A-10. I've never, I've never tried it and I'll have the big one on the table along just so you could see. GB, I got a camo high performance um, L-39 with the uh the in runner in it now the same the same motor as the i don't think it's the same one that's it's the same one that's coming in the avanti now and everything else it got the upgrade so you know but another really you know easy build compared to something like this which actually went together a lot easier than i remembered it i guess because it was one of the first planes i put together but there's obviously i didn't do all the little bits so you still spend a lot of more busy work time getting all the decals on and such but that stuff's always fun. Put on a movie tonight and, you know, do that. David Martin Graff, we are booked for Null, but we're going to find out on the 2nd. So this Thursday, they should let us know. Th this Thursday? What is today? First day? Yeah, Thursday. They should let us know. Uh, when is Motion or Free Wing going to do an A7 Corsair? It's one of those everybody really wants. Maybe, eventually. It's tough time to be jobless with all the dang fields getting closed down. I know, we're not in the part of Georgia where there's a lot of empty farmland either. We're in the hills, hillsy tree area of Georgia up here, so it's like there are really no open fields. Marty Cruz, a battleship. As soon as I get one, I'm going to unbox it live here at, for sure as soon as I get a boat. I haven't, I haven't seen a boat yet in person. Um, Alpha did all that filming that you see out there. He did that uh, with the guys from that factory. When he was over, you know, he's over there near all the factories. So I've yet to get one. And I'm probably not going to be able to get one till um, everybody else has the ability to get one. So, you know, might be a little bit. That would be more May-ish. But that, I could sneak off to the lake anywhere and pop that in the lake and drive it around. I don't mind doing a rogue mission through the woods dressed like Rambo with my big battleship under my arm. <laughs> going, going rogue on the lake. That would be... That would be fine. Fly off a road somewhere. Yeah, I mean, I'm not recommending anyone go fly rogue if you don't have to. But, you know, you do what you got to do to get things, you know, like, it's up to you. But I'm trying to be a good citizen and do, you know, do what I'm told and hopefully get back to normal. I'm just interested to see what's going to happen when the day comes that they say, is it just like, all right, on X day, every store is going to be open and... Are people going to be so used to this new sort of reality where people are going to be timid going out? How long is it going to take for you to be able to just walk by someone at a normal distance in a, you know, in an aisle at the at Walmart or something, you know? Because I don't know about you guys, but a couple times I do run out. I'm not a mask wearer. I'm not wearing gloves. I just, I just go. I'm just going with it. And, you know, but you walk down aisle, you see three people in there. I'm like, oh, I'll go down that aisle next time you know, like, or if you see one you're kind of like you know it's awkward it's just so awkward and you just it's 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 the most interesting <laughs> interesting time to be alive here interesting time then my kids are gonna ask me so what were you doing dad during the the crisis of coronavirus i was building airplanes <laughs> and talking to people online about it <laughs> that's about my uh i was hopefully giving people some entertainment and uh, something to do with our time. Jameson has reservations at a Georgia State Park, and they say they are still open. 
Well, that's interesting because from what I know, all the state parks should be closed, but, um, you know, I mean, our field is part of a state park closed, you know, they don't want anybody over there. And then they just did it to Stone Mountain. If you've ever been to Georgia and you've been to Stone Mountain, that's probably one of the more recognized state parks in the area because it's just a gigantic mountain of stone. When you go on top of it, it's like you're on top of the moon. But, um, you know, is what it is. Oh, it's at the county level, Spinny Testaverde says. Okay, so Cherokee County. So it gets not all state parks, each county-wide. But Georgia's still one of the states that hasn't done the the whole encompassing, um, you know, not that they're forcing you to stay inside, but, you know, some states are a lot more, are being a lot more, um, you know, I'm sorry, my, my language as far as how they call it are being a lot more lenient, I guess. Georgia's being more lenient with it, which is weird because Atlanta, you'd think be, you know, Atlanta got, is probably getting hit pretty hard and we're about 30, I'm about 30 minutes outside of Atlanta where I am. But we've been good here. Ah, okay. Spinny. Alex knows more about state politics than I do. And I've only been here be two years this June. So Georgia's still pretty much new to me. Close our parks. Not the state of Georgia. Ah, okay. Cobb County closed it. Gotcha. It's all right, guys. It is 1.45. I mean, I'll, I'll hang out till 2. That's what I did yesterday, making an even 2. But is there anything you guys want to see on here on the uh, on the Tiger Cat anymore? I mean, if you guys never use the Admiral Stability Plus Gyro, I highly recommend it. I mean, as far as the price goes, and again, when you mount it, just mount it flat, mount it flush. Use doubles. Don't use Velcro, like somebody said in there. Velcro can move. You don't want your gyro moving. You want it to be as fixed as possible. I wouldn't glue it down either. But also, I wouldn't hide it because you want access to those pots. Um, sometimes, you know, so you want to be able to get to it. So for like the the Tiger Cat, I'm going to mount it probably right where it is or maybe back here. There's a little tray where I would be able to touch the pots just in the back or I might extend that tray with a piece of plywood or something, glue it down. Um, but other than that, it's 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 pretty simple. Once you've done it once, you know, then you, then you get it. Um, but again, watch our series of videos. I got a whole series of videos that takes you step by step of the way you should do it, and people seem to uh, like it there. James, try Cherokee Bluff. As far as trying to fly at Cherokee Bluff, I, have, I haven't even explored my own county as much as I'd like to. You guys keep them in here flying airplanes and building airplanes. <laughs> I don't get out much. <laughs> Plug and play 3D printed for morons thing. I don't know what that means. I'm going to install the Admiral Sear my FMS Beaver this evening. Yeah, man, super easy. Be fine for that. But, you know, an FMS Beaver, like a High Wing Cub, does it need a gyro? I mean, a part of, I mean, I love a High Wing Cub to get knocked around. You know, it's fun getting knocked around in the wind with a high wing cub, you know. I just like the gyro in like a warbird because, you know, you never see a tiger cat getting beat up in the wind, you know. Well, I guess maybe you would, depending on the wind. Copy that. We were both out. Yeah, we were both out of Suffolk County. I'm glad to not be in New York at this moment because I can only imagine what it's like being up there anymore but i still got friends there and you know they're doing their thing but that's where a lot of my friends are who now are starting to you know somebody i work with got it and things like that still no family members of the people i know or friends close nobody close to me has gotten it yet but um we're there oh alpha's hitting me up okay alpha's alpha is typing to me while I am live on here. Is Motion going to make a gyro with Futaba protocol? Uh, I don't know, you know, uh, again, it's, it's these are, you know, Motion doesn't make the Admiral gyros, it's our branded, but they are made by Lemon, you know, like you could buy the Lemon, I mean, there's no secret there that, uh, you know, the Admiral line is stems off Lemon, but we do, you know, Alpha, obviously in our product team, talk to these designers, say we wanted, they, when they did the Admiral, we wanted it to do X amount. I believe the Admiral version came out before the Lemon version of it. You know, something like that. But, you know, so we work with them. 
But uh, I don't know. You know, I don't know if Lemon's allowed to use that, and I don't know the ins and outs of allowing, you know. You, you, there's got to be some sort of work when you're using the protocol and stuff like that. So, you know, I'm not sure. I guess it would be cool for Futaba guys, but if but if you didn't get a get a hobby eagle, I I have all those videos I made too. The hob there's three different hobby eagle gyros that are all awesome, and they set up virtually similar, just a whole different pattern of how to do it, but the same idea applies on the gyro. James, is the new planes are secret? Yeah, I mean if you don't know about it, then <laughs> I'm not going to tell you about it. <laughs> They better be secret, you know, that's that's the fun. I love the tease. And we're only doing like a 24-hour tease whenever we release something. We used to do it like a week in advance and people were getting peed off with it. But part of me loves it. It's a little fun we get to have, you know, in marketing. I mean, it's like me. When I like movies, you know, you see the trailer come out of the teaser trailer. They tell you, teaser trailers come out in a week and you're just like, oh, I just want to see it now, you know. Same idea, same rules apply. And we like to have fun. Just want to say thanks, man. Didn't know about this live feed until just now. Big MRC customer, KG. Be tuning in the future. Oh, no worries, KG. Well, we're just doing this every day this week because of what's going on. And maybe we'll continue it until it ends. I don't know. I don't know if I have enough content. But every Friday at 12 o'clock is uh, when the, the actual show is. 12 p.m. Eastern. So, um, so, yeah. So, this Friday will be episode 13, which will be our... Our actual episode these are just sort of impromptu and that's why i'm going over our actual episode only does it um we only go an hour i'm trying to make it structured but since these are impromptu and you know we're here and every, and the world's a little crazy right now might as well just couldn't you know it's it's if we're doing a little bit to help keep some of our customers just while you're home maybe you're you know little bored you know who doesn't like to talk rc because that's why we like to go to the field like i always say i like to go to the field and fly just as much as i like to go there and bs with people about rc it's just as much fun to do it that way so it's always fun to I, my thought process was i'd be here building a plane half the time i'm not even looking at the comments and you guys are just talking to each other it's a great way to just have a live chat since we're not all on you know a cell phone or something Mm -mm -mm. we don't need contact just sign on and chat i know right they should we should just that's what hobby squad needs like a big live chat i think it's there they they might have been experimenting with it but that would be awesome you know on hobby squad you could see who's online and you can i think you might be able to chat with them maybe it's something we could look into but when the boat's coming in you'll have to fill your bathtub yeah yeah i know i well the, the boat the main battleship i mean what they say, 53 inches is a Missouri, I think, or 49 inches is the Yamato, or vice versa. Yamato would have been the bigger one, 53, right? And then 49, so, yeah, I mean, they're pretty big. You wouldn't be able to turn it around, that's for sure. You could go forward and backwards just over and over and over again. And then with all the snakes in these Georgia lakes, I can't wait to put Alex in, a, Alex in the lake, right at water level, drive the boat right at him. Let him take the risk. Anything for the shot, Alex. Get out there. <laughs> yeah, Nabil, YouTube my favorite platform. Of all social media, I like YouTube because you can avoid, you know, the nonsense of it all. Like, Facebook can be fun, but Facebook can also get on your nerves real fast. Instagram seems to be cool because it's just pictures. It's very, uh, you know, it's not as crazy as Facebook is right now. Working on hosting a real flight server to fly together. Need to figure it out. Oh, Alpha's working on that? Well, then are you going to send me real flight so I can uh, so I could join in that fun? Because I, I don't have that. But I heard those. Those are looking awesome. Is it just everybody just flies around? Can you, like, cr you could crash into each other and stuff? Can you shoot each other? Is I don't know how. Is it, is it like War Thunder-ish when you play real flight with a bunch of people? Or is it just everybody flying? you know by themselves any chance flight line models will be made in refly highly doubt it you know unless somebody can unless somebody can make uh third party stuff but i i hardly you know i hardly doubt it you're not gonna see you know we don't we don't have anything to do with horizon and vice versa it's like coke and pepsi so you know Coke's not going to sell a Pepsi. Pepsi's not going to sell a Coke. 
how many Black Horse models will y'all be releasing? Uh, as many as we possibly can, EP. You know, we keep going, you know, just we're, we're slowly growing the line. Again, we got to fly what they got. We're helping them now with the stuff that's coming out that's going to be new eventually and things like that. So, uh, you know, we do our... We're going to be working with that factory like we do free wing and everything else, and it's just a learning process. But, you know, as long as everything... As long as everything, uh, you know, as long as everything flies well and it meets our standards, then we sell it. But like Alpha said the other day, you know, there are products for, there are products made by companies we sell that we don't sell just because we didn't like that version of the product. You know, it happened with a lot of, a lot of places. There were free wing models when we first started that we never got on our website. And Alpha, you know, Alpha attested this because they didn't like them at the time. But, um, you know, it slowly but surely. Uh, we'll eventually get more and more. Always more to come. I'm not on the gram. Alpha's going to make me join. Come on, Jameson. Get on the gram. Might as well. So, guys, four minutes, and I'm going to do a hard cutoff, I believe, because I want to go eat something. It's around lunchtime, and like I said, I've got to go. I've got to go out into the, the world again today to, to get some supplies. So I'm going to paint my face. Probably blue like William Wallace and go sprinting out with a, with a skirt on and just see everybody will stay away from me if I just act like a lunatic when I, when I run through Walmart in about a, about a half hour. <laughs> What's the best way to keep everybody away from you? Get on Jameson Clark. We need more people to follow. Yes. Anyone have Monica? Robert Patrinsic. Oh, eat what's for dinner, man. I almost like your dinner posts, your cooking posts, Robert, more than I like your plane posts. And I hope your hand is doing fine. Uh, I saw, I see some of the updates looking like it's getting better. Um, you know, I hope you're going to be back in full swing and everything's going well for you guys, uh, the Patrinsic brothers. Any plans for smaller Black Horse ARF kits? That's an alpha question. I'm not sure. I would like to see it. I mean, cool to see smaller smaller models. Top of the line RC providers, thank you. From Cedro Woolley, Washington. Thanks so much, Rackham. Love to have you on here. Good to see you there. Getting by, my friend. What's for dinner, Robert? Come on. Clue us into those. That's a real question. Some good sausage or, you know, barbecue. James, you're going to end up getting arrested. That would be too funny. Well, not that funny. That's the, you know, but that would be hysterical. I would make a good, I'll get a wig on, make good William Wallace running through. Me and my wife started watching The Outlander, which is similar on uh, Netflix. It's a crazy show. Crazy show. It's got a bit of the, uh, the William Wallace to it and a bit of Game of Thrones pork yes there it is that's the answer we're looking for i oh reminds me gotta grab some bacon while i'm out there my hair is not staying with me two minutes guys two minutes and then i'll i'm gonna end i'll leave and i'll leave the chat up for about five minutes for you guys to say your goodbyes and everything um yesterday i cut it off right away because I'm doing this on my own. But I hope everything worked well. Again, glad to do the Tiger Cat. I'll do the finishing touches on her tonight, probably. Who's got a live show tonight on Tuesdays? Is it the um is it the fight flight club? Is that who is that who goes tonight? I forget who the Tuesday guy is, but somebody's doing Tuesdays. I think it's Dustin Hallman and um my name the name proceed name is leaving me right now. And that's silly because I definitely converse with them on Facebook from time to time, but when you're live, you just forget things that you normally know. Pig will always be the king of animals. <laughs> bacon, bacon, bacon. Yeah, Robert, I think you're right on that. You guys take care. All right, everybody's saying their goodbye. So I guess that'll do it, guys. So tomorrow, again, look out in the morning. I'll post up the video, and it'll obviously have the time if you check YouTube out. And I'll make posts. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to be going live at 12. If not 12, it'll probably be around 3 or 4-ish um, later in the day. But more than likely, it's looking like I'll be, I'll be live tomorrow at 12. 
and we'll probably have one of those 64 millimeter birds to do and talk and hang out and shoot the hay and then thursday i'll go later because one of either tomorrow or thursday we do have to get out and fly so guys thank you so much again you know as always hope you hang in there hope the family's safe hope your friends are safe um i hope you guys are safe wash your hands and we'll see you next time at motion rc and